We have found the perfect internet solution for us. And we're finally ready to share it with you. Everybody, I'm Susan and I'm Mike and we are RV blogger and one of the questions that we are asked most often is how do we get internet while we are on the road and until now we really haven't been able to answer that question and why you might ask it's because we really just like to try and test out whatever products whatever services that we use for a really long time before we share them with our audience. Absolutely, and so we've been using multiple ways to get internet in our RV while we've been traveling. And as you guys know, you know we're on the road at least nine months a year, so we work from here, so we have to have internet no matter where we are. Mm -hmm. There's just no way around it. We have to have internet every single week. <laughs> <laughs> every single day. <laughs> every day. Everybody camps differently. Some people may use very little internet. They might not need it whatsoever. Um, but with us, our upload speed is more important than our download speed. Yeah, sometimes that's very true. Our download speeds are, are important when we're using the internet or watching TV or streaming right. vi movies or things like that. But our upload speed matters when we upload videos to YouTube. So, but we also find that, you know, for a long time we were kind of trying to use some campground internet and stuff and that really was a poor solution. A lot of campgrounds haven't really updated their internet service so you're sharing that service with everyone else that's at that campground and it could be a strain. But some campgrounds do offer packages where you could upgrade and get a faster speed sure. and a bigger data plan yep. or whatever at your campground. So those are options and we did try those out we've, in the beginning. We've certainly used them before and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. Right. And when they don't, we would find ourselves at a Starbucks or somewhere having to Struggling. find internet to you know to right. be able to upload a video or, or so what we, have you. We knew we had our homework cut out for us and uh, we were up for the challenge because it was, it was bitter and we wanted to get away from that. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't want to and we didn't really want to recommend what we were doing because we weren't totally no. happy with it for a no. long time. And we've tried a lot of different things along the way. But right. now we have it narrowed down to three sources that we use for internet. And we don't use them all at the same time, but we use them when we need them. We have mm -hmm. all three. So we can pretty much get internet no matter where we are under almost any situation, right. right? And chances are one of those three could work for you. Yeah. You will not need all three, but one of those three might work for you. Yeah, and we've used all these systems now for, uh, one of them for a couple of years, mm -hmm. one of them for over a year, and the, the newest one we've been using for more than seven months. And we've driven all over the country using them all mm -hmm. in the past seven months. So right. I think we have a pretty good handle and we're now feeling very comfortable Right. with being able to recommend these to you as well. And these may or may not work for you, like Susan mentioned earlier, but this is what works for us. Mm -hmm. So here we go. So the first thing that we have is Starlink. And I'm sure everybody has heard of Starlink, although we still do run into people that have never heard of Starlink right. before, right. which always surprises me. But, yes. you know, not everybody knows everything. I certainly don't. Right. Uh, Starlink has been a real game changer for us because... The signal quality is excellent. We right. pretty much have, have been able to get signal almost everywhere we go, mm -hmm. and it's an easy solution to use mm -hmm. for sure. The setup and is easy. And if you're not familiar like with Starlink, explain to them. It's more of a satellite thing. Yeah, so Starlink is the whole thing by Elon Musk, right? He started SpaceX and he's been launching all these rockets into the into space and he's been leaving satellites floating all around the the globe as he's been doing it. And so the way Starlink works is you have a dish where you are, there's a satellite in space, and then there's a transmitting station somewhere on Earth. It transmits the signal to the satellite and the satellite beams it to you wherever you are. So it's a great system. It's not based on line of sight or cell towers or any of that kind of stuff that get a lot of interference. So it's probably our favorite system that's out there. Um, and so but let's go through some of the pros and cons right. of it because now that you know how, how what it is and how, how it works. Starlink works a little bit. Yep. Now Starlink has several different plans that you can purchase. They have plans for people that are at home mm -hmm. who don't have internet otherwise, and that's why they developed the system in the first place was to reach more of the rural communities where there really wasn't good internet options. So right. it started there, and then they expanded into 
the RV market and even uh, boating, boating and, and airplane. They even have an aircraft <laughs> one, which right. is amazing. Yeah. Uh, look up the prices on that if you have a chance. <laughs> uh, but we bought the RV mobile plan, and right. they call that Rome. Yep, they yes. call it the Rome Starlink plan. Starlink Rome. Starlink Rome, and it's been great for us. Now there are two different kinds of RV plans that they have. One is a plan which they call the Rome plan, and you get a portable dish that you take with you. Mm -hmm. And that dish can either be mounted on the ground or you can buy a special pole. We have one, I'll show it to you a little later when we go outside. Um, but you mount it wherever you would like. We like that a lot because if we're parked under trees, we can put the dish out from under the trees and get satellite signal without any interference. And that's super crucial with Starlink. Right. Um, there's another kind that you can get where the Starlink dish is mounted right to the roof of your RV. So it's always there, it's always on your RV, but the disadvantage to that is you can't move it unless you move your whole RV. So if you're parked under some trees, now your dish is mounted to your roof and you're kind of just stuck with that right. situation. So that's why we didn't go with that plan. Right. Um, so that's that's how we feel about that. I think the Rome plan is, is definitely the best one and the portable method is the way to go. So right. you can move your dish and get the best signal that you can that mm -hmm. way. Now, as far as pros and cons of it go, right. so the pros, I think I've kind of mentioned a little bit already mm -hmm. that Starlink works where other like cellular towers and stuff like that don't work. Right. Uh, so if you're in Midwest yeah. and you, you, know, you have a spotty cellular service, this will work for you. Sure. We've been in Upper Michigan and had no cell signals and, and Starlink worked great. Right. Same did. thing in Colorado. Right. Uh, in the mountains where cell signal doesn't work so great because it's kind of a line of sight thing and then there's a big mountain between you and the other cell tower, you're not going to have cell service in that situation. So right. Starlink has worked great for and us. using Starlink in Colorado, we could also make phone calls. Right. So, right. Uh, which you can just turn on your, your cell phone so that you can use Wi-Fi to make phone calls. Right. And we do that with Starlink and it works perfectly. Right. Because we, I met some women at the campground there whose husbands were out fishing and they couldn't reach their they husbands. Couldn't even call. Them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know because their service just was not working. And I thought, well, maybe he kind of wanted it. Though. I don't <laughs> that's know. possible Who knows? too. <laughs> but anyway, that's a whole other story. So one of the other really big advantages to Starlink is with the Rome plan, you can turn it on and off as needed. So for example, you know, we, we travel around about nine months a year and then we're home for about three months a year. But the longest period we're home is around the Christmas holidays. So when we go home for Christmas, we can turn off Starlink for that month or so and not have to pay for it right. while we're not using it. And then we just reactivate it when we hit the road in January, when we head down to Florida for the Tampa RV show mm -hmm. and all that good stuff. So that's really been a huge benefit. Right. So if you are a summer camper or just a weekender, um, you have that ability to turn it on and off and not pay that monthly charge. 12 months out of the year. Absolutely. It's also really super easy to set up. We're going to go outside in a little while and we'll show you how we have ours set up. And I guarantee you we have it set up differently than most people do. So stick around for that. But it's super easy to do. It just takes a couple of minutes when we pull into a campground for me to mm -hmm. pull everything out and set it up and mm -hmm. boom, we're up and running in, I don't know, less than 10 minutes. And we've simple. not had any problem uh, during bad weather either. Right. Yeah. yeah, it works in the rain. We've had heavy wind, rain, storms, mm -hmm. you name it. We've been through some mm -hmm. wicked storms through the Midwest right. and our Starlink works. Right. And so great. we've still been able to watch television. We've still been able to get on our computer. It hasn't affected our service at all. No, no. not really. Yeah. But there are some cons, of yeah, course. Yeah, there are a few. Now, one of them is always the price. You got to right. pay to play, man. You got to pay. Yes. And the Rome package that we have costs $150 a month, right? which is pretty steep. When we first signed up, it was $135, and mm -hmm. since then, they've raised the price to $150. Mm -hmm. um, but we feel like it's totally worth it because we do get great signal. We get signal wherever we are, and like we mentioned a minute ago, we can turn yeah. it on and off whenever we need to. Yeah. So, you know. Um, the other thing is, one other con is, like we mentioned earlier, trees are not your friend when you're trying to use Starlink. Um, and so we've kind of gotten around that issue in a couple of different ways. One, we don't have it mounted to the RV, so we can move the dish around and set it up wherever we like. We also bought 
a second uh, cord to go with our Starlink. So the cord that comes with it is 75 feet long and we've been in situations where we had that cord stretched to the max to get out from under the trees so we could get a signal. Mm -hmm. So we bought a 150 foot cord as mm -hmm. well. So now we have two cords mm -hmm. and we can move our Starlink as mm -hmm. far as we need to, to be able to get right. a good signal. So if you're the type of camper that likes wooded camping, you're at state parks or national parks, uh, that could be an issue for you that, that you may have to figure a work around yep. or find a spot in the campground that's a little more open. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then our final con is that the Starlink itself is not huge, but it comes in a box. You know, it's about, I don't know, two and a half feet, you know, by a little more than 16 inches and then it's probably about a foot or so tall so it's a decent sized box and it does take up some storage space in the storage bin so now you can get additional storage containers to hold them but he's not ready to let go of his box yet i just used the box that came <laughs> in it works fine so it's a little big and it takes up a lot of space so that yeah. that, that can be an issue and even if we bought the case it would still take up the space maybe and that rhymes so there you go <laughs> So, uh, without any further ado, why don't we head outside and take a look okay. at our Starlink system and we'll show you how we have it set up so you can see that as well. So here we are at the back of our RV and this is how your Starlink dish comes from the factory when you order it. You get a dish and then you get this stand that it sits in and then you can walk around and you'll just set this up anywhere that you have a clear view of the northern sky. And then when you turn it on, it'll, it'll interface with the satellite and capture the signal for you. The cord here runs to the router, which I'll show you in just a minute. Now, this is a great setup for us, and we use this quite a bit, especially if we're parked in an area where we're under trees. And now I've got to walk out from under the trees to set up the dish so we have a clear view of that northern sky. But in this campground, and in many campgrounds, there are not a lot of trees around. And so instead of setting this on the ground, I actually bought a pole system. And it's really just two aluminum poles that come together, if I can get them apart. <laughs> That's it, it's just two poles that go together and you snap them together. And then it's got a special top on it, which is specifically made for Starlink. And so now, instead of the dish sitting in there i just plug it in to here and everything just snaps right into place and now this pole system goes right onto the ladder on the rear of our rv where we have ladder mounts that come with the pole setup and all you have to do it's really windy today but just get it lined up get her in place and there you go now once you turn on your Starlink there's a motor inside of the dish and it will orient itself to the northern sky and then interface with the satellite to get you signal it's really really a terrific setup now like I mentioned earlier here's the size of box that your Starlink comes in and I just use this for storage because it has these plastic pieces in here so everything fits in here nice and neat and secure and then everything gets covered up and it really stays in one place so it doesn't go flying around when it's in your storage bay and you're driving down the road. So I don't see any reason to buy the case because the box works just fine. Now you'll also notice that the Starlink does come with a router and here is the router. Now we used to go through this whole setup process where we would plug the router in at our dinette inside where we were earlier. And then we run the cable from the Starlink through the slide and then connect it to the router and then plug the router in inside to get our signal. But our solar installer, uh, Derek Green, and I'll give him a little plug in this video, he has a Starlink as well and he's got a fifth wheel. He set his up with the router in an underneath storage compartment bay. And then I was like, wow, what a great idea. So now instead of having to run the cord from the Starlink dish to the router through a slide and into the RV. We just run it underneath, comes up right through a hole in the bottom of our storage bay, and then we plug it right into the bottom of the router, and then the router itself plugs into an electrical receptacle, which we also happen to have in this bay as well. Now, you may or may not have that same opportunity on your rig, but if you do, it is a great way to set this up 
because it prevents you from having to run the cord or from the dish to the router like through a window or through a slide out. Um, it's just a really easy way to do it. Now I don't leave this in here all the time. When we're driving down the road I unplug this and I store it in the box with the dish and everything so everything stows away nice and neat and safe. So our second internet solution is T-Mobile Home. Yeah, now T-Mobile Home is a cellular signal service. So it's just like your phone, right? Just like you can access the internet on your phone, you're accessing the internet through cellular signal. And T-Mobile Home, which is exactly the same as T-Mobile Business, by the way, there's no difference between the two at all. It's just a word. And it's the same thing you would use <laughs> at home. It is. So it is a system that delivers cell signal, but you get your internet through there. Now with cell signal, you have an issue with being able to get you know, kind of line of sight to a tower. If you have mountains and things that are in the way, it can, it can be a problem. But T-Mobile Home can work at home, mm -hmm. or like Susan said, or if you have it at home, you can unplug it, throw it in your RV, drive to wherever you're going, plug it in there, and mm -hmm. boom, you have internet service just like at home. <laughs> and it right. works great. Right. And that's what- So you wouldn't even need to buy something different if this was your home device. Yeah, you can you can have it at home, unplug it, take it with you as you go, and then there you go. Now we use it just in our RV, right. um, but um, one of the other great features about it is even while we're driving down the road, we have our T-Mobile plugged in and we get great internet service while we're driving along. Right. So we normally just set our T-Mobile device right up here on our dashboard, but the good thing about the portability is we could take it and move it over to the dinette or try another outlet, another window, just in case maybe the signal's a little bit better on that side of the RV. But we leave it up here, it's out of the way, not a problem at all. And then when we get ready to leave, I just pick it up and set it right down here next to me as we drive down the road. It doesn't go anywhere, it doesn't get in the way, and it still has amazing connection service right here. It's so good that Susan is even, ab even able to play video games with our grandson right. on her computer while we're driving down <laughs> right. the road. It's a little bumpy, Yeah, but, but the signal's fantastic. I put my earbuds in, we talk to one another, and uh, we're, we're, it, it's able to hold a connection. <laughs> <laughs> So this is a great way that we've, a great thing we've discovered and we've been using it all over the place and it's been mm -hmm. working really, really great. And uh, we've actually been using it more than Starlink because we were testing it. You yeah. know, we, we wanted to try it out everywhere we possibly could, uh, not just the East Coast where you might have good cell service all the time. We wanted to test it further West where you might be a little more challenged. Yeah, but it's worked pretty Absolutely. well just about everywhere we've, we've gone. It doesn't work everywhere, of course, no. but it's worked really well where right. it does work, which is in most spots. Mm -hmm. And it's allowed us to be able to turn off the Starlink right. because the T-Mobile's been so great. Right. So here are some of the big pros and cons with the T-Mobile plan. And I think the biggest pro is it's 50 bucks a month. Only 50 a month. It's super cheap. It's cheaper than the Verizon internet we're paying for at home. Absolutely. So we right. ought to just use this at home and I cancel know. that. But <laughs> now, that we're, now that we're talking about it. But, <laughs> but it's cheap. It's great. Yeah. Now, some of the other pros, which are huge deal for us, are that there is unlimited data with the plan. Right. So it doesn't matter how many gigs we use. It doesn't matter how many videos we watch or how many... Or how much TV how much we're TV watching. We stream, how many videos we upload. It's unlimited data and they don't throttle you back. Right. Uh, so it's a really fantastic plan in terms of that. Mm -hmm. For 50 bucks a month, really, you just can't beat it. Right. Um, then also, it does work in a lot of places. Uh, T-Mobile has the largest 5G network in the country, bigger than any of the other networks that are mm -hmm. out there, like AT&T or Verizon. So that's why you can get pretty good signal mm -hmm. everywhere you go. All right, and like Mike said, it is portable. I mean, even if we were in the Jeep and we needed service, yeah. we could very take easily take that with us. It does plug into a regular receptacle, like a mm -hmm. 110 receptacle, like you would have at home in your house. And so in our RV, it works for us because we have solar set up in here and our outlets work all the time, whether we're plugged into shore power or not. So your RV might not be set up that way, I don't know. But if you have a little 
uh, power uh, source, like a battery power source that you can plug things into, like a, any kind of a regular plug, you could use that mm -hmm. in your RV or like in your Jeep if you drive off somewhere and you want to have internet wherever you are. Just bring your battery bank with you and plug it right in and there you go. You have T-Mobile right. mm -hmm. on the road or anywhere you want to go. Mm -hmm. So it's a fantastic setup. Yeah. And the only con that we really could think of is the fact that if you are in an area that doesn't get T-Mobile service, then you may not have this service. Yeah. But that would be like any other cellular service out there. So um, we we do believe it's widely out there, but if you are in an area where T-Mobile is lacking, that might be its only con. Yeah, we really, we just kind of made that one up because we couldn't think of <laughs> we any We couldn't cons. think of any other con, <laughs> so, so that would be your con. The only con is it doesn't work everywhere. <laughs> right. Okay, there you go. Now our third way that we get internet is through our wine guard, which sits on the roof of our RV. And the way these wine guard systems work is you can put a SIM card in there, like the SIM card that goes in your phone, that little teeny tiny chip. And you can take your chip from Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, whatever, whatever carrier you want. We recommend you use one that you don't already have. Um, and so we have a little Verizon chip and we put that in our wine guard on the roof. Then the wine guard just simply distributes the signal and sort of amplifies it throughout the RV so that we can connect to it from everything on board, whether mm -hmm. it's computers, phones, you know, Sony Blu-ray, TV, whatever it is, we can connect to that signal. Right. And um, that's kind of just like the T-Mobile the setup, but not quite as good in our opinion. Right. Now, um, but they, it is a cellular signal, so it, it this, operates this just the, like the T-Mobile right. does. This is the oldest plan that we've been using. This was our starter plan. This yeah. was the beginning of our search for internet. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and so um, we've, we've learned a lot about this and, and, and we can touch the pros and cons on that now. Yeah, yeah. So. You know, the, the, I guess the pro, one of the big pros is, is it is a step above the campground Wi-Fi right. that you would get if you have a good signal where you are. We, we found right. that the, if you have a good signal, it's fantastic. It's right. as good as the T-Mobile. Right. Um, and it just doesn't work as, as in as many places as the T-Mobile. Right. It doesn't have as good a coverage, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, but it works great when you have a good signal and mm -hmm. it's definitely better than the campground Wi-Fi. Right. Um, Another really big advantage that we like is it doesn't take up any space, right? Mm -hmm. It's a teeny little chip and it's in the wine guard on the roof. On the roof, so. So it doesn't take up any storage space mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. So that's a nice benefit as well. Mm -hmm. Another good feature about the Verizon SIM card in our, in our wine guard is that you can increase and decrease the plan. So if you're not camping as often, you can decrease to the lower plan. If you find that you're running out of data, you just make a call and you can increase to the, a higher plan to get more. Yeah. So this is also a con of, of Verizon at the same time. It's, it's a yeah, pro it's a, and a con it's at a the same sweet time. Option. <laughs> <laughs> because if you've ever gone onto Verizon's, like you can go on the website and increase your plan. There are four different plans that you can get with your Verizon chip. $20 a month gets you like 15 gigs. Then you can jump up to the $40 a month plan, which gets you 50 gigs. You can jump to the $60 a month plan, which gets you 100, or for $80, you can go to 150. Now, all four of these plans, once you used up your gigs, they do offer unlimited uh, data, but it comes at lower speeds. So that's not so yeah, great. You're gonna get throttled back. You get throttled back, and then it's useless, really, because you're we can't even stream the circle of death. TV at that time. <laughs> so it, it just doesn't work to do that. And so when that happens, then we're online trying to upgrade or we're calling in trying to get them to change it on their end. Then we have to turn off all the power to the entire rig so that the wine guard turns off on the roof. And then when it reboots, now we have the upgraded plan so we can get more data. So it's kind of inconvenient in that mm -hmm. regard. And it's kind and of expensive. And there may be a wet, better way of doing it, but every single time that we tried to upgrade our plan, That's we, we went through. through this painstaking process of calling customer service. Yeah, or going on the internet. Or going on the internet and running through the things. You know, they're like, can you just take your chip out? Well, no, we're not gonna climb on the roof. <laughs> and take the chip take out. Take the lid off the wine guard, <laughs> pull the chip, you know. So then we power the coach completely down 
and back on and then it seems to work. So yeah. maybe there's a simpler way to do it. We haven't quite figured that one out. It has been inconvenient for us to say it at, least, yeah, at yeah, best. For sure. <laughs> but it's our third option and we always leave it at the $20 a month. Um, we u we do use it occasionally, but it's pretty rare that we ever go past I, the 15 gigs. Right. I, I, the I, other two options are really good. Yeah. I think that when we might use it is when we're traveling and we hit an area where the T-Mobile isn't working for a split second. Right. We immediately have our Verizon chip picks right up. Yeah. So if it's for our GPS, if it's for you know, streaming something on your phone, if you're, you know, you just need some sort of internet connection, it, it will pop in occasionally when needed. Um, so that would be, you know, our third final option as a backup plan. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But so between all three, between the Starlink, the T-Mobile and the Verizon internet, right. we seem to have internet all the time, all the no time. matter where we are. Mm -hmm. And it's very good quality so we can work or, you know, use our computers, uh, stream movies, whatever the heck we want to do. Right. And like we say, everyone camps differently. Not everyone is going to need high speed internet, like what we might de need or what people who are working on the road. If you are, you know, if you're an RV nomad and, and you're, you have an online job, you, you need will internet. need, you know, that high speed internet. But if you're just a weekend camper, a summer camper, and you just want something to hold you over so you can stream a little bit of television or the kids have their tablets or yeah. you're you know, researching where you're gonna go next um, on your next campground or your next adventure, the type of service you might need might be a little bit less. Yep. And honestly, that's when I think the T-Mobile will play a great factor in, you know, especially if you can use that at home and no one's at home if you're camping, so just, just unplug take it, it with and you. take it with you. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> now, full disclosure, uh, if you sign up with any of these services, we don't make any money. We're just yeah. sharing with you what we're we use We're just so excited why that we, we use it. finally figured out something that works for us. Because <laughs> for a long time, it was pretty embarrassing. What do you use? Uh, yeah, we're using the Starbucks. campground. Starbucks. <laughs> yeah. You know, in the very beginning, it was quite a struggle. And, uh, but we knew once we hit the road, we were gonna be testing things out and seeing what they, how they were and get off the East Coast a little bit and see, you know, what we can find elsewhere. Yep. So if you liked the video or you found it helpful in any way, we sure invite you to subscribe to our channel. We make videos with lots of tips about how we RV and we also do tons of RV tours as well. Mm -hmm. So we hope you'll go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you want to and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. But if you want to learn more about some gear that we use and we really love and enjoy, which we've also tested for years and years and years, just click the box down below and Susan and I will see you in the next video.